and welcome to the Labour Social. I hope you can hear us. I hope you can see us. I'm joined today by Rachel Harris and A. Thompson. And also we'll be having Super Tansky along in a little bit. I think Wayne in, in uh, Wayne and Basildon threatened to come online. And my internet's already pretty bad here. I'm in the Lake District for the weekend. And uh, yeah, we're, we're running on, I don't know, uh, like uh, dial-up. Dialogue connection. Do you, a, do you old enough to remember downloading the trailer for Star Wars Episode One and it taking two days? Uh, I don't ever remember downloading anything Star Wars related. Oh. I, I know I look like a geek, but yeah, you um, do. yeah. But you're actually really cool. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not a geek. My background is completely normal. Yes, your background <laughs> yeah, is actually Star yeah. Trek, which <laughs> it might be. So, Aid, um, we've had the week, haven't we? We have indeed. It's been another. It's, it's well, I mean, it's felt like a really busy week for scandalous news stories. But then I was thinking earlier, like how often there are massive political scandals now. Yes. It actually just like are we in sort of post traumatic stress kind of permanent jitter kind of mode now, where every week there is something big kind of blowing up. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, that, yeah. that's that's the plan, I think. Uh, we're just in our omni-shambles mode. Well, weren't they talking about, like, oh, people aren't having midlife crises anymore because every, every day is like a crisis? Did you hear mm. about this? That and, I think, the idea of, like, the like, middle age, like, that's just moved way, like, older now because the stages that people got to when they turned 40 back in the day, like, traditionally... They would be homeowners. Uh, they would have X amount of savings. They would be way more secure. And now, like, a lot of first-time buyers are only, like, 40. Or even worse, like, they're still living with their parents. And stuff. So it's – it's you get this whole kind of fiscal arrested development effect where you can't – you're not even psychologically old enough to get into um, a midlife crisis because you, you might never have left home. Well, you need yeah, a good like ten mom. years of living out first. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and the the things that you could do back in the day, um, like the cottages around here. We just went for a walk. I'm in the Lake District. Um, a friend was just telling me that um, the when when her parents bought the cottage here, they they were going for like one thousand pounds, one thousand mm. pounds for a cottage in in the Lake District. <laughs> yeah, of course it, that was 1961, wow. but still. Wow. I was talking to um talking to a couple of guys on my team earlier at work and th this is off the back of a conversation with a friend of mine last week where he was saying like they basically they've outgrown their house and they were thinking about getting an extension done so they got a couple of quotes and they live in the same sort of neck of the woods as I do in the southeast. He got two quotes from two different builders both of them for over 100,000 pounds to extension. get one room. Yeah, on the side. I told this to the guys yeah. on my team. They were like, you could literally buy a house for that, yeah. like up, it, up, top, up north, top north near where this guy lives. Up. Yeah, but then you'd have to hang out with us northerners, us grotty northerners. <laughs> we only have a bath once. Oh, well, that's, yeah. 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 Look at Wayne. Yeah, there's not a man of hand sanitizer as you could take up there. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to have like bad inter internet inception here because I've got bad internet and Wayne's always got bad internet. So this is going to be quite fun. Hello, Wayne. Can you hear us? Come in, Wayne. Oh. Yes, I can. Yay. I've I've been to the well. I've got me several pails of internet. Yeah, you so sound crystal clear this week. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll work. Good. Yeah, yeah. Straight, it's, it's straight, I made sure I checked that yeah, he was plugged in and all that. I'm like which a, I didn't yeah. do last it's, time. It's like proper lo-fi. Oh no, you broke it up. Oh well, never mind. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Rachel, tell us what what do you think of all the Tory scandals this week? We've had a few, haven't we? Well, I mean, I I mean, you kind of thought, you know, photographing your knob and he, and WhatsApping it to someone, and then getting your mates to not to photograph their knobs and send it to mates was a low point. But no, no, yeah, but, you know, it was almost like this new guy said, "Hold oh, my beer, I'm gonna," you know, yeah. and I'm gonna. And off he went. You know, I'm locked up. I need five grand. I'm with bad people. Well, I love hang around with a lot of bad people. I don't beg 70-year-olds for five grand in the middle of the night. So it just seems yeah. to me, new uh, barrel, dug through the barrel into... Oh, no. I've disconnected. The meeting is disconnected. Oh, it's come back now. Uh, I'm just exciting to me. Hello. Hello, I'm back. 
Hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, hello. hello. I just had to send um Sorry, the I internet had to send James O'Brien that um compilation of, you know, the uh Tory MP from the uh, from Little Britain yeah. who comes to the gate to meet the press. <laughs> yeah. Uh yes, I I was retri- I was I was retrieving a Murray mint from the glove box. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Hello, <laughs> can you hear me? Hello. What's going What's yeah, going yeah, on with yeah. your internet then? I'm yeah. in the lakes. I'm in. I'm in the Lake District, and not only are the lakes full of shit, the internet doesn't work. That's what the Tories have done to us, man. It's the shit. It interferes with the Wi-Fi signals. Oh, that'll be it. Well, mm. uh, we just—it's because of all the metal and plastic we eat. It goes into the river and it blocks just, the Wi-Fi just, signal. I just lost signal entirely, so we just we just ho- mm. lost the whole section there of of the show. Um, mm. But we're back now. Hello. Um, Someone was saying in the chat that um, the BBC had to apologise at lunchtime because they, they were talking about Mark Menzies getting trapped with the bad people. He means the Tory party. And, uh, and, and, um, like bigger and, and boys showed, came. The big boys came. The, the, uh, bigger boys. <laughs> Harry Enfield. Oh, what a sketch. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, they, they accidentally showed a picture of Willie Rag. And they said, oh, sorry, oh, that's not the yeah. right person. <laughs> well yeah there's so many of them this is the thing do you do you put that warburton guy up there do you put the tractor guy do you you know it's like lucky dip yeah. i think it was even, even dan hodges said earlier he was like it would be easier at this point if like the tory mps who are not engulfed in some sort of scandal could yeah. just put their hands up is lucky that... dip's one of the games they learned at public school you know? yes. <laughs> they've, they've, they've probably got like a little like the bbc they've just got a folder that says dodgy tories and they just click on just drag and drop <laughs> that's what they've done like, it's they don't know what one it is anymore yeah it's 300 of them <laughs> but yeah it is I mean you know further embarrassment for the Tory party but talking to Dan Hodges Hod- Hodge- Hodges whatever his name mm. is uh, he, he was the guy who today was doing day 14 of, of Rainer Gate this you can't tell yeah. us what Angela Rain has oh. done but you know whatever it is it's so bad it's so bad it's really bad yeah I just can't tell you what it is though so yeah I told you it's, it's it was, basically it this the case it's basically plague, pestilence, famine, and whatever she's yeah. done. <laughs> no, she's ginger. That's the I'm. You know, us. You know, it's it's illegal. Soulless ginger. Yeah. Soulless. <laughs> and do you know but, if two gingers touch, they explode. They do. We do. That's why Graham and I cannot be in the same county at the that's, same time. That's very true. I used to go out with a ginger, and I can confirm. Um, John, mm. <laughs> John is entering the uh, entering the chat. This is John Mortar. How did that work? What? How did John enter the chat? Well, are we talking about my there ginger? He is. Hello. Uh, look at look at him smouldering away. He is smouldering yeah. in that picture. He's he's very smouldering. Oh yeah. That's, wow. that's his MySpace picture. Zoom's doing that thing where yeah. it's not letting him hit, hear what we're saying. Oh, it might be letting him hear what we're saying, but we can't hear him. Or see him at the moment, um, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of with, with yours when he was, um, I was, I was connecting for ages. Oh, where are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, mine was connecting for ages, so yeah. I couldn't see. Anything. Yeah. I think, I think this is just. I don't know if, if 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 too many people turn up. There's a good chance that the internet will just collapse into a big smol- smoldering heap, uh, which is a bit. bit Graham Hughes brings down the Lake District. Yeah, <laughs> burn down, burn down the Lake District. It will set off all the methane. In the uh, in the in the air, from all the <laughs> shit in the rivers and the and the lakes. There's only one lake in the Lake District. What is it? Windermere. No, that's big one. Here. <laughs> and Coniston is a water. It's Basson Bassenthwaite. There you go. I'm sure someone's going to say that in the chat in a moment. Um, what Angie Pagan says: the curse of the gingers in capital letters. That's nice. <laughs> cursed, oh. cursed we are. To not be able to go out in the sun. Um, Viv says, a decent Tory. There is one left. Poor chap. <laughs> is there? <laughs> Are there any? Uh, my mum is in the chat. Hi, mum. <laughs> Hello. She says, hi, Graham. Hello, Graham's mum. Hello. So we had to, we had no swearing. Uh, and no mum jokes. Bollocks. Aid. I'm looking at you, aid. <laughs> hey. No your hey, jokes. Hey, hey, hey. And, and Billy your, says, your, your um, um, re- reputation precedes you. Yes, clearly. I would never do such a thing. Uh, Hi, Graham's only one bum. lake in the Lake District. Two of the other fascinating fact I found out this week. Before 1985, nobody called their daughter Madison anywhere in the world. Really? Yeah. It only started because of the movie Splash, where they actually, uh, Daryl Hannah's character chose the name Madison because she saw like Madison Avenue and she needed the name that didn't smash all the TV screens. 
Hmm. There's um, something depressing about that. It's a bit like when uh, um, there's a character in EastEnders called Alfie. Yeah. 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 And then all of a sudden, Alfie became like the most like, oh. popular little boy. I was like, yeah. how depressing is that, that everyone just takes the names off soap? Yeah, but characters. do you remember in like the 90s? Tiny. In the nineties, footballers' wives, Chardonnays everywhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fucking well, nightmare. My my name Highly Graham popular. comes comes from a guy who played a Billy Bunter character called Graham Moffat in the nineteen thirties. Because that's who my dad was named after, and I was named after my dad. So basically, I was named after Billy Bunter or the guy who played Billy Bunter in the nineteen thirties. I was named not, after an Osmond. Not legit, but Billy Bunter, but like a not, not Billy Bunter. <laughs> 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 yeah, Wayne. Who 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 are you named after, Wayne? Yeah, an Osmond. And uh, Wayne Osmond. Mm-hmm. Is he a and as is my brother. Who's that? Your brother's also named Wayne. That's very confusing. <laughs> is your brownie yeah. brother called Donny? <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, Super Tansky, oh, can you see us? Can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, Hello. How you doing? I've got to not wobble the table because my camera's on the table and it wobbles a lot. We're, I'm all right. I'm all right. We're, we're in low resolution Lake District <laughs> this evening, so this is going to be quite a short <laughs> Labour social. We were just talking about late. Um, we were just talking about Tory sleaze. <laughs> <laughs> Have a sip of wine. <laughs> Just to make a change. I've got, I've got a dignity, yeah, I've got a dignity hash juice on the go. No, it's it's mental, man. Like I was just like, like yeah, the other day, Instagram, <laughs> you know, Instagram is clamping down on um, political content. Yeah, they're like making you check a box so you can see it, otherwise they won't push you yeah. out. Like it's so fucking fucked up. It's not like we've got really important elections or anything. The other day, it said to me, there was a little note come up. It said, if you make the beginning of your video a bit more interesting, then um, maybe people will watch it all the way through. I was like, mate, I had a Brazilian rent boy um, <laughs> like, kidnap and someone getting a dog pissed in the first 30 seconds of my video. Like, what more can I do? Like, fucking hell. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you haven't to fiddle with the hashtags. As long as you don't put anything political as a hashtag, it's still kind of seeping through a bit, I think. But... Um, <laughs> but do, do you know, the audacity of that it was like you not you having a laugh do you know what i you thought haven't... of when, when that thing came out about, um, about mark menzies it was sort of cross between with nil and i we've joined the tory party by mistake and and peep show you know with um yeah. uh mitchell and webb like on, that that's the sort of situation they would find themselves in a peep show of like i'm here with some yeah. bad men the bad men yeah <laughs> what it's still bigger boys came. It's still bigger boys. Bigger boys. Bigger boys. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Pun in Ace has just dropped a chat in. Thank you very much. She's singing Graham's Mum has got it going on uh, to the tune of Stacey's mum, I guess. Uh, thank you very much, Pun in Ata. And uh, yeah, if we see Ollie, we'll, we'll ask him where his hat is. So thanks very much for the super chat. But yeah, I mean. By, by, by Fountains of Wayne. Yes. Was it? Uh, yeah, it was. Stacey's yeah. mum. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, God, I've yeah. Tried to forget about that song. Bit, to be bit, fair, bit gapard, bit, bit kind of yeah. like stuck, get stuck in your head. Bit of an earworm of a song. Talking of songs, has anyone listened to Tay Tay's new album that came out this morning at five a.m.? Not that I set me up. No. Uh, oh, mean, for, no. But what the fuck is she doing? Putting out a thirty-track album? Is she mental? Thirty-six tracks. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd rather bore my boss. Thirty-six tracks. No. That's how many songs. She never heard it. You should you you should She's look at Jimmy songs. Kimmel today. Jimmy Kimmel went out and they went. I think they went out into the streets of Hollywood and they played Lara Lara Trump's new album, and they told people it was, you know, it Lara was Trump. the new album you're talking about from Swift Taylor Swift, <laughs> and people were listening to it. And, it, and Lara Trump's album is mega. It feels sounds like it's got a lot of electronic support, and it sounds pretty bad. And and they were going, this is uh, Taylor Swift's new album, and people were going. Yeah. And we want you to be honest. And the people, even them, this is Taylor Swift. Yeah, sh it's shit. <laughs> and, they're, and, they're going, and, it, and it was like, oh God, she's. She, it sounds like she's been on dope or something. <laughs> but it was. You should look at it. It's on the Jimmy Kimmel broadcast today. I'm gonna have to watch. I've never heard of who's, La who's Lana Trump. She's Lana. married to Eric Trump. Oh she's, shit! She's she's sick. She she makes music. She's just, she's just taken over the RNC and released the worst album on the planet, and it's just like. <laughs> It's really supported by a lot of technology by the sound of it. And it really, and even then it, 
It's mm. worth a li look at l listen to um, look at uh, Jimmy Kimmel's broadcast. His piece to camera this morning. It's brilliant. And <laughs> what what it, is it with right wingers that are releasing very bad music? Like, uh, uh, have you heard any of the music by Loser Fox? Have you heard any of his nah. stuff? Oh, Absolutely oh, diabolical. Mm. Embarrassing. So embarrassing. It is. They, just they can't no do shame. comedy and they can't do music. They've got no shame. They've got no shame. <laughs> They've got like a private education so they get on the telly, don't they? Well, mm. yeah. 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 Well, the guy who yeah. the the Taylor Swift album is about is a British actor who's very posh and went to private school. Mm. So there you go. If you want to go out with Tay Tay, you need to be a a, yeah. a, a um a, a posh boy. Oh well, never mind. Next life yeah. in the next life, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it is interesting, you know, because the BBC killed off the Now Show. Wayne's they killed off, off Mot the Wee. They're killing off all the satirical shows. You know, I just think, you know, have I got news for you is going to be next. But it's and they went on the shows they've got. They're sneaking on right wing comedians and they're not yeah. funny. Oh, God, they're yeah. not. They're not. Well, the BBC is really... down is never funny, is it? You know, when people tell jokes about people who are gay or people from Africa or, you know, it's just it's always yeah. just like, is that the joke? Oh, OK. Yeah. Sorry, I don't, I don't understand this whole concept of uh, right wing comedian. What's one of those? It is a bit well, of an oxymoron, that. isn't it? <laughs> it is absolutely an oxymoron, and they, you know, it's always kind of and the and the um, news quiz had had a cup had a couple on towards the end. I mean, the news quiz changed because they used to have a lot more comedians, and they have Mark Steele on and Mark Thomas, who I really like. Yeah, and then they started bringing on journalists from you know the sort of Spectator and the Telegraph, and it, oh, it started to. Oh my god! Did you read that article about the bloody guy from the Spectator? Who said that like a lecturer's um a woman giving a lecture, I think it was on Kant, made him so horny he had to go and buy sex and he actually outlined how he hired an escort in Cambridge. And he wrote that. He thought he thought to just write that under his name in the spectator. Did you hear about that? Did you guys I, not? I I saw something about this. Yeah. I didn't know well, that it went that far. I read the, the first couple of paragraphs of it where he was saying he couldn't focus on what she was saying and he he found her really attractive or something. I thought, oh, it's a bit sexist. I didn't realise he went on to, like, Detail, document. He went to a brothel and pick up a prostitute and then he went into a bit of detail about the process of how we went through the purchasing thing <laughs> and then a little bit afterwards about how you could tell he thought they had a connection. Wow. <laughs> Like, but, okay okay but maybe it's okay as long as he wasn't locked in a room and then phoned his assistant for six and a half thousand pounds at three in the morning maybe it's bad yeah. boys came. uh yeah no bad boys came uh, <laughs> well, well actually that's actually not true is it um <laughs> i want you guys to know in all seriousness here i will never phone any of you at three in the morning and ask you for thousands of pounds to clear my rent boy debt that is yeah. bollocks, because that's exactly what you did to me I've, last I've, night, I've, Aid. Yeah. It's ever yeah, again. I that last week. You were just Shut lucky up. that I was awake <laughs> because I was waiting for Tay Tay's album to drop. But the fact <laughs> is, it's a bit, it's a and, bit, it's a bit what we say, liberal. But what I'm saying, Gray, is that I've learned from this, and okay. ne never again. Never again. Okay, I, never think, again. I, think that, I think that should be rule one of the Labour Socials Constitution. <laughs> You're not allowed to ring people at three in the morning mm. asking for money to Demanding free you from money. your rent boy. Yeah. No. <laughs> The only, the only reason you wouldn't call us is because you know we're fucking broke. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm sitting with literally buckets of internet. Yeah. yeah. Can you know I phone, am I allowed to phone people who I've got a dog <laughs> drunk? Can I phone you up to help me sober it up? Is that all yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I love the I... idea of like feeding the dog coffee. Like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> hey, um, just one thing, actually. We're not I... worth it. <laughs> when... like the... So Sorry, when I'm on. writing on uh, toilet walls, when I'm writing on toilet walls, how do you want me to spell your name? <laughs> AID is fine. Yeah. Well, just just above the ventilation hole. So I... that just above the ventilation hole that goes to the next cubicle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you reckon the dog that he got pissed? Do you reckon the dog started texting his ex-girlfriend dogs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah man. Just yeah, check it in. Just, just seeing how yeah. you're doing. Imagine the dog propped on a kebab counter. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't like him. I might bonk him, but he's got a nice car. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just go and 
going into the, I, I could just imagine it. Hello, boss man. Uh, chips. Uh, yeah. Woof. <laughs> it's really bad though. I mean, it's like of all the things, like they just keep coming out with stuff that is actually beyond what any of us could parody. Yeah. Here's the like, thing. Here's, dead. It, here's mm -hmm. the thing about this story is like I found myself, and don't jump on me and maul me for saying this, but I Ready? found myself feeling slightly sorry for that guy in the sense that oh. in 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 the same way that I feel quite sorry for people when they end up exploded on the front pages for something actually quite shameful that could decimate their family and their future like it must be a really scary time for somebody like that he's he's made a mistake he's messed up and to to be in the whirlwind the tornado of that sort of tabloid frenzy must be mm. really scary however then I, I get to this point here and then i'm like but if I voice that, that's exactly the sort of thing that his entire party would then accuse me of, like, virtue signalling. They'd be like, oh, yeah. piss off, you well, bleeding heart. Uh, but the thing is, it's, it's different in the sense that he he did do it and he freely admitted it and everything. It's yeah. it's the other extreme is when people get sort of doxxed for something they didn't do. Like, there's a guy in America at the minute who was accused of being a mass shooter and a Nazi, and he was splashed all over the right wing, like your Stephen Crowders, your Tim... Pauls and all them, um, and they're all getting sued now. They're all getting sued by the same geezer that um, um, successfully sued Alex Jones because he can't go back to a normal life. His family yeah, moved yeah. around everywhere, and everyone thinks, oh, because they just wanted to be first to get the story out there. Now yeah. he he's been labelled as that, and the retractions that they 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 posted mm. were nowhere near as big as the splashes and yeah. the big feature that they did. And it's really interesting that you bring that up, Wayne, because. Um... Graham, this is a, a an area close to your heart because do you remember when you went out on a big Nazi shooting parade? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how did night. it affect your life? Well, I was at that parade when you when you called me asking for the six and a half grand. So you know, <laughs> it was all a bit embarrassing. Um, I, I I was hanging out the back of a pig at the time. Well, <laughs> do, you, do, you know, do you know what I do you know what I say to that? Like you know, pe the, people know on the right was hanging say, out the first. Be careful. This is, this is <laughs> fast. Now. fast this is fast becoming less the Labour social and more the Labour just defamation Friday night. <laughs> it's more like, Labor... how can we like, make each other grimace the most? <laughs> no, but kind of like out each other. I've been, I've been making social media content since 1999, if you can believe that. Wow. And I've put oh, like yes. literally thousands and thousands of hours of shit out there, you know, of me traveling yeah. around the world and doing this kind of stuff comedy skits and everything and i've never i've never said the n-word by accident i've never said the p-word by accident i've never not by accident no no not by accident obviously no but like those <laughs> things <laughs> they say oh you can't say anything these days when, and I, I'm when you're in your like, marches though it's a different story yeah when, when i'm on the nazi march obviously <laughs> no but like generally speaking like it is possible to live your life and not do those things and then these people who get yeah. found out years later oh you wrote this tweet in 2012 like being really racist mm. and they're like oh but that was a long time ago i'm like they knew it was wrong then and i don't really have much mm. sympathy for them to be honest with you because i think that if you know that you are in the public eye or you want to be in the public eye there's a certain way you should behave and, and mm. having these sort of but what, what, is, it, the what is it they call it it's like it's, it's, it's something archive they they basically go they get some little intern or some junior to go through all of your tweets and all your facebook posts and then just yeah. sort of like highlight something take it completely out of context yep and then they'll they'll give you that little bit that you said there but they won't give you the the post that you're responding to or the comments afterwards they'll just take that little snapshot yeah. and ruin your life mm. yeah but that's what they do to um trans people on twitter they will yeah. they will attack and attack and attack and attack this poor trans a trans person and then eventually the trans person blows in defense and that's the bit that they spread everywhere and yeah. they photoshop it and they put it everywhere. Look, misogyny, yeah. trans person, losing it, bullying. Mm -hmm. And you think, hang on a minute, you went at them for three months solid and then mm -hmm. they explode. And that's, you know, they um, that's what you hmm. see. That sounds a little bit like a certain kind of geopolitical thing that's going on right now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> good news. Sorry, Aid, for you chip yeah. in. Um, G GHK has dropped in a super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, for the legal fund, if required, defame away. I don't think five pounds going to get us very far, <laughs> GHK, but I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry, Aid, go on. What were you going to say? 
I was just going to say it sounds also a little bit like the way that paparazzi behave. Yeah. Like they will shout yeah. horrible stuff, really horrible stuff until the person snaps. And then it's like, yeah, aha, aha, aha. we got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably want to kick the faces off a of paparazzi, to be fair, if I mm. got yeah. Mm. Oh, did you see that that story about those those three protesters that stood outside um Keir Starmer's house? Yeah. And just put a banner up and some shoes. They all get arrested. But then the hypocrisy of it is, as soon as like someone like Jeremy Corbyn walks out of their ass, they're like door stepped, and they're mm. just shouting stuff at them. But oh, that's all right. Mm. I, I don't get it. Press can do what they like, but as a normal person, you can't protest. Well, we were mm. talking about this just, earlier today uh, about the fact that mm. the press are just, it's the Wild West. Like, they, yep. they're they one mm -hmm. of the worst professions in the country in terms of morality. These are the people who yep. defame the dead at Hillsborough, the people who hounded Princess Diana to her death, the people who hacked the phone of a dead schoolgirl. And the, they get to they get to police themselves uniquely mm -hmm. in all industries and creative arts. They get oh, we, to police We need a free themselves. press. We need a free press. Yeah. We were so low down on press freedoms list. I mean, there was the big story this week, wasn't there, with um, Hugh Grant being forced into a settlement yes. because of course yeah. of this. he paid Murdoch 10 grand or, or uh, 10 million pounds, sorry, or more. Um, and like the things that, that, he, that Murdoch had been accused of, like the press, uh, the son had been accused of, was like bugging his car. Mm. and stuff mm. like that i mean like it's real like hacking his phone bugging his car i mean really invasive yeah. um mm. you know things to try and get a story and there's you know i think they're the biggest yeah. barrier that we have to having a functioning democracy in this country mm. the press yeah mm. and they're so, the next kind of people in my eyesight once i've dealt with the tories like yeah. mm. jesus <laughs> i'm with you i'm with you on power. that yeah yeah no power but i'll campaign yeah press I'm press right. reform Tim, so Tim, what what are, Ten, why don't you muscle in on um, Murdoch's new fiance, bump her off of a boat, you know, a la Maxwell. You step a in there and, it, <laughs> and then get in there from the inside. Take him down. Yeah, uh, push I him mean, off the yeah, yacht. He'll I mean, probably outlive us all. He's like Mr. Burns. He just yeah. Never... <laughs> Evil people always live a long time. He drinks. Fucker. He drinks the blood of unicorns. Yeah. That keeps really? him alive. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks very much to Seven Dippity Journey for the super chat. Thank you. Uh, to help aid pay Graham back that six and a half grand. <laughs> so there you go. You, we got two pounds towards, hey. towards that fund aid. But yeah, uh, talking of money. No, the, um, the, the what you were talking about, Tan, with this, um, where, where Hugh Grant has settled. And the reason he settled is it's like quite horrifying, really. It's yeah. this, in the British legal system, if um, you sue someone, and they offer you some money. So say he's offered £10 million. Um, and then he says, no, I want you fuckers to go to court because of what you've done. You've broken the law. I hate you all. Then if they go to court and he is offered in the, you know, he wins the case, you know, outright, just completely wins mm. it. And the court offers him like, yes. just like, hey. you know, £999,999.99. He's yeah, got to take penny it. less, he has to pay. He has to then pay for wasting the court's time. Effectively, this is this is the yeah. pen, pe, this is your penalisation for wasting the court's time because it's something yeah. that could have been agreed on out of court. So why did you bring it into the court system? We're yeah. already busy enough, yeah. and and a Murdoch relies on this because if you if it comes a little bit less than what yeah. you were offered then you have to pay not only your own legal fees, but also the mm. legal fees of the people you are suing. And if you're suing Murdoch, he uses the most expensive lawyers he can get his hands on for this very uh, purpose. And it would have cost Hugh Grant £10 million, even if yeah. he had won. And he hasn't, you know, he's a rich man, but he hasn't got that kind of money. And this is, this is something that is rotten at the heart of yeah. our legal system. And because... Yeah, well, that's, uh, it's called a... Part 36 offer, that's called, um, in law. So wow. that's what, the, if you've, if, if, and they do it in debt collection as well. That's called a part 36 offer in debt collection as well. So you make an <laughs> offer and you then you go to court and you, and if it's less, you end up paying both sides. It's really common and it's often used by the semi baddie in a, in a case. Yeah. Um, that you never quite get your satisfaction. This... I feel sorry for you because he could, he probably yeah. would have won, but oh, it is but risky on the damages. According mm. to, uh, is it Evan Davis, the uh, Lib Dem, yeah. former Lib Dem MP? He was saying yeah. this week that there were over 1,600, 1600 cases that have been brought against News Corp 
um, the you know the Murdoch yeah, billion, press, and a billion a billion pounds has been given to people to keep it out of the court. A is billion. News Corp the guys that don't like Spider Man? It's it's them, isn't it? It's yeah, <laughs> that's a Daily Bugle. Daily Bugle. <laughs> Day Jonah Jameson. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, welcome to Nerd Chat. Yeah, <laughs> but the hope yeah. is, uh, Tam, were you listening to the same thing? The hope is that either Elton John or Prince Harry will just keep going and take them to court yeah. anyway and take the hit. I don't know. I don't even know if Prince Harry can afford it. Really, um... didn't didn't Prince Harry recently settle? He settled with another yeah, paper. He settled on something this week. He's won yeah. one thing this week. It's for similar reasons, really, because, yeah, I mean, on I think on Hugh's part as well, it's also the principle of not wanting to give that fucker money. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to, to give him money. But, and also, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just backed into a corner because of how it works. But you can you can see why mm -hmm. it's set up this way, to protect, like, really powerful, wealthy people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different in the States, isn't it? Because that's why um, Dominion, they slapped Fox News for, like, like 760 million or something like that and uh they couldn't they couldn't even make an offer because they, they was just it was just nailed on yeah so yeah. Paul yeah. said yeah is, have there, the money. is there not like a happy medium that hugh could go with where he goes look i'll take the money but because i know that i probably would have won that case i can actually give this evidence now to the guardian or to uh, the independent or like a, a news organization who then yeah. publish it so it still is all exposed it's out in the public domain it ruins the reputation of news court but he's not exposed to the cost of or the risk oh, but... reputation i mean their reputation is being like this i think mm, yeah money into hacked off who i'm gonna meet with next week actually and um see see what i can do to help them because like they are you know they're they're, they're putting out information all the time about what the, they're doing um, I, I think it's probably they're probably a bit worried about which journalists they can trust with it. I suppose mm. um, because of what what's gone on. But you know there are credible investigative journalists out there that would that would carry it. But it's not going to surprise anyone. It's not yeah. going to surprise anyone because it's happened to so many high profile people now. Mm. Yeah. Some of the stuff that they've done is just the most shockingly <clears throat> disgraceful stuff. I mean, relating to women having abortions and miscarrying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she's dead. GHK <laughs> has just dropped a super chat. Thank you very much, GHK. Paparazzi hounding watch back to black. And um, yeah, mm. I was thinking there was a story. I was like, this is really quite horrific. So, trigger warning. Um, I think it was Britney Spears. There was a rumor going around that she was pregnant. And so, the paparazzi, this is in the 20, 2000s, the noughties, a paparazzi took a picture of up her skirt and the the picture showed menstrual blood and so the big headline was that she wasn't actually pregnant and that was permitted no, somehow uh, I mean, yeah but i think i think like Tang, to, to your point do you think we've become just so accustomed to it and we're kind of numb so when a big scandal comes out such as i don't know whatever the, the new one's going to be about some poor innocent person that we just go oh well it's the sun it's what they do Oh, it's the right wing media. It's what they do, and there's yeah. only there's everyone's kind of well, a lot of press have jumped onto the bandwagon because it's profitable. We've only got to look at GB News, um, and Talk and TV. Mail, mail online, um, yeah. Oh, mail online, but a cesspit. Sidebar it... shame, you know, attacking women's bodies, attacking. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what? Um what would have been a good look if if there had been enough organization or if you had if you could have the foresight of knowing that a billion dollars was going to be paid out in damages would be if you got all of the people who received the damages money to put that money into a pot and they all bought shares in news corp <laughs> then shut the fucker down <laughs> yeah well then you've got a seat at the table you don't even need to shut it down you can just dictate how that company is run you can clean it up you could shut it down you could make it unprofitable and it has to shut itself down but mm. like money is the only language that these people understand so it's a real shame that it's not going to trial in the way that people would yeah. have hoped it would do but, but the next best thing maybe you buy a seat at the table yeah but I, I i mean the, the other issue is there they don't mind running things at a loss you look at them no. two new stations, they've oh run at a massive loss. They've yeah. got no fucking viewers. 42 million mm. is what GB News lost last year. 42 million pounds. 
that's how much money yeah, these fuckers yeah. have got just to burn. And like, we're they, they value propaganda. They value propaganda over power notes. Yeah. 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 And the, yeah. And but the well, problem is so, that like, nobody watches it live. It's just that all the other bloody channels amplify it and show it. Mm. Well, Same with the newspapers. About, well, it's about influence and power. This is the yeah. thing. Influencing our politics. They're choosing our politicians. They're having control in ways that you know most of us can only dream of. They've actually they're actually playing politicians like marionettes. They're the people mm. that really. Yeah. Got and they're non-doms hmm. and they don't live in britain and they have infinite power over millions of people in this country but, it is and, it, and it's funny how you you hear people regurgitating what they've yeah either been heard heard or fourth hand and you can you can hear them repeating stuff verbatim and i'm like well, i know where you got that from yeah and, and that's why like, um on um my podcast mikey he hates me for listening to people on the other side of the fence because i want to hear what people are saying so when i hear it being repeated i can then go <laughs> i wonder where you got that from yeah because that, that's not an original fault is it mate mm. and then when you challenge them on it they then start attacking you and yeah. call to me the, the lefty wanker and all that the fucking woke <laughs> brick and all that stuff and i'm like how about it i don't care yeah. i had that during the week actually wayne i was in yeah. uh, east hanning i was in hanningfield right if anyone know, know. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we yeah. all want to say so. Basically, for the uninitiated, Hanningfield is is one of the most Tory places in the country, right? It's, whitest, it's the whitest, yeah, it's very whitest. And I went to one of the rustic pubs in Hanningfield for for a meal, and um, at lunchtime, and this group of twelve people, the, the local um, uh, what do you call it, club, Rotary Club, Rotary were, club, were yeah. having a meal. Not one of them was under seventy. Seriously, they were all old, and we got chatting away to them. And um, what was fascinating was was that they were all going. Nah, we the bit I liked. And I think Graham, I told you this as well. They were, they were all, all of them. You could tell they were just pure Tory. The lot of them, and they were all going. Nah, we're not voting. Not that's no point. They're all as bad as each other, aren't they? Yeah. But one important thing they that, that they kept coming out with going. Yeah, like there's no point voting for for uh, Labour. I mean, like that. What's her name? She's uh, she's scaffed her own house, isn't she? She's like done all that stuff with that house, oh, and I'm sort of going, "Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, your lot, right? Do you want do you want to join to count it all up? I literally said, join to count it all up for you. I've yeah. got a list as long as your arm here. I know. Um, mm. And they just can't because it, again, it's it's the press, it's the daily, but they're all you yeah. can tell they're just all daily. They just read the headlines. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is, and I'm sorry, I'm saying this, I know it's not very democratic. But none of them want to vote, and I thought, "Fucking brilliant!" <laughs> Actually, I yeah. don't want you to vote. Yeah. I, feel like, them. I was Sometimes rather I feel just like... don't vote. That's fine with me. Stay yeah. at home. Yeah. Don't vote. Yeah, stay at home, coughing dodgers. Yeah, but sometimes um, I feel like a step, a step for wife. A step for wife sometimes because I've had in the last week. I've had we're full up. Uh, I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere. I mean, literally in the middle of nowhere, but and you hear people go, we're full up. We need to stop, you know. So I, I mm. said, you live in the middle of nowhere. We're, how are we full up? Yeah. Um, and then the other one was somebody that, you know, we know came, seems a really nice chap. And he just said, oh, I'm, oh they're all as bad as each other. I'm going to phone reform. And I said, you're going to vote reform. I said, why? They're never going to be in power. And they they can make lots of promises to you that they'll never implement. And he said, yeah, but we've got to stop them. They're getting mercs and houses when they come off those boats. And I was like, Jesus, you're even too stupid to breathe, mate. You know, I, I really got, I won't talk to them now. My wife is like, you've got to talk to them. They're in our, you know, we right. know them. And I can't talk, it's too stupid to breathe. Rachel, for a minute there, I thought you said they're getting off the boat and getting murked. That's what I thought. <laughs> getting murked, bruv. Um, I mean, that is like beyond, like, there was a, there was someone on the telly, no, it was on LBC the other day, phoned in, and it was going so well. It was like, yeah, I was true blue Labour for years. Um, true blue Labour? No, uh, true, yeah, it was uh, true blue Labour. True, uh, it was like Labour voter for years, and he said, oh, this time, it's got to be reform. And I was like, <laughs> how could you how could you vote for old school labor yeah. and then decide this time i think i'm gonna go with like people that are even more thick and fash than the tories well i, so I think like, like, I, our economy i think you meet a lot of those people who claim that they voters remain but you know the eu is being really mean 
or whatever. I, yeah. And I just go, you never voted Remain. Piss off. You go and check the social media and it's all like, yeah, leave her. We're sovereignty and all that kind of stuff. So um, listen, yeah. we, this is only a shorter show tonight. So we've only got about 20 minutes left. Uh, so what I want to do is just run around and ask everyone's uh, sort of story of the week. It could be a good story. It could be a bad story. <laughs> um, I do want to, um, I, I'm going to go first. I don't normally do my own, but it's just that uh, I think it was Michael Warner in the chat. Uh, maybe uh, was it Michael Warner? I'm just trying to look. Yes, uh, asking if we could discuss Jonathan Nunn for a moment. So this is the councillor, the Tory councillor, who kicked and s- punched, spat at. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, content warning here. Trigger warning. Um, he's facing allegations. I should say because I don't want to get sued. That he kicked, punched, spat at, and throttled women. Five women have come forward making assault claims against this man who already had a massive, um, uh, what was it, a a charge, an assault charge back in 2002 on his wife, which, I mean, I'm not going to read it out what he did to her, but it was was pretty bloody horrific. And how is this guy? Yeah, how is this guy, first of all, free to roam the streets, but secondly, like being a Tory councillor, I just, I, I, it, and, and it's, this has hardly been covered by the newspapers because obviously, and, and the news because the 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 uh, Mark Menzies story is quite more sensational, sensationalist, and then we've had uh, Iran and Israel throwing missiles at each other, and we've got the Trump trial going on in America, and it, it's all kind of got pushed down by everything. But this is absolutely horrific, and it strikes the very core of the rot that is the Conservative Party in this country and that this guy was allowed to, to 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 work as a councillor for so long well it's like imran ahmed khan the the guy that 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 again content warning um molested a child the toys knew about it they let him stand he won they let him advise on a grooming panel whilst he was under caution about children and then he went on to be convicted and jailed I mean, this is this is the Conservatives and it's also the failure of the police, both of, of which are institutionally misogynistic. Yeah. No other reason for it. Women like I mean, again, Patsy and I were talking about this just the other day um, and a number of other women have reported like horrific stuff that we've got in terms of threats and the police have just not even investigated it. Like they, they won't even investigate it. They'll just drop it. They won't look into it properly um you know the same applies to things like deep fakes etc so it's the police and the tory party simultaneously yeah. um having horrific attitudes towards women because what do we matter i, I mean yeah and, and they are they, they've been in cahoots for years you look at hillsborough which was the uh, 35th anniversary this week of hillsborough and you know you, you you look at the the um conspiracies between the 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 uh the Tories and the police and the you know the establishment, yeah. and then when yeah. people are going on about minorities being the establishment and all our problems are caused by trans people and and people coming in boats who get a Mercedes as soon as they arrive in Britain, you're just like oh my god like is it a mind virus is it how do we how do we combat this how do we I mean you know I can, I can deal with I can, I can deal with people who are, you know, full of drink or full of spite or full of anger or whatever, but people who are just full of stupidity, I don't know what to do about them. <laughs> I just... It's the rise well, of populism, isn't it? Well, I mean, in America, a lot, of, a lot of the problems they've got there is sort of the critical thinking and the education. You know, they're, trying to, they're running down the public education system and trying to privatise it so they can brainwash pr- with corporate schooling. And so the the education system has got so bad that people are coming out and they can't critically think, they can't dig deeper they don't understand so a lot of the people you know when you listen to what they say they're just unable to they you know they still trust media they don't can't go to all the sources they are in a way you know kind of it's i don't sure if it's by design by hard right people saying let's make the the population dimmer so they don't understand what the fuck we're doing to them or but it, it does feel like a big it feels for like a sort of reverse Hitler youth in a way. We'll just make, we won't train them to be fit and then become soldiers or to have babies. We'll train them just to be stupid. Then they'll just vote for us. Yeah, that's possibly that's, that's true. A good way to it, <laughs> and just to go back to this story about um, Jonathan Nunn, it was overshadowed by obviously the story about Mark Menzies. And the really shocking thing about the me- the, the 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 Mark Menzies story, it's not the salacious details. It's the fact that the Tories have known about this for months 
and they didn't suspend him. It was only because it went public that they suspended him. They took the whip away. Up to that point, they were fine with it. They did it very quickly as well once it came out in the press because they, I think, they know that there's there's truth to it. Yeah, I think like, they, they can't. They, they, that, that is like the, yeah. the speed once it broke, but it took the press breaking it, which shows everybody how it really works, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is like a, a massive insight into how the, the toy pie actually works. They'll obfuscate things like they did the Rent Boy thing. I mean, he, he should have in 2000 and what was it, 2014? They launched an investigation then. What came yeah. of that? Mm. Uh, this is um, almost just, just sweep it under the carpet. Almost a carbon copy of the Pinterest stuff as well. Everyone was like, Did you know about it? No, we didn't. Are you sure? Absolutely sure that we didn't know about it. Then it comes out like once everyone knows about it, they're like, Yeah, we did we did know about it really. I'm really so like like how many times have we got to go through the same story, the same scenario of a guy, it's always a guy, uh, gets caught being a bit lewd getting himself in a, in, a, in a situation, behaving in a way that is unbecoming, illegal, criminal. Fast. And then Sorry. and then it turns out that they knew about it and they've just, like, it go, you get the sense that they filled out an HR investigation form or something and they're like, pending. It's mm -hmm. in process. We are going to ish sort of look into it. And then somebody a little bit more senior is like, shush, 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 shush wait, wait. If you <coughs> fire him, if you pull the whip away... The press are going to know about it. It's another by-election. We always lose these by-elections. It's hugely embarrassing. We just don't need that drama at the moment. That's the <laughs> sense, isn't it? That's yeah, what but, it is. But, but I think what they do is they long it out enough for some for the for the news cycle to move on. Something yeah. else comes up and takes over, yeah. and then they yeah. can just bury that down there and just go, like, yes, yeah. nothing yeah, happens it's like to you. The Johnson chaff thing, isn't it? Except they're all fucking mad scandals. Um, it's mm. not just out information or i mean like what you were referring to about making people thicker I, I, I mean i don't think it's just that people have got a bit thicker and believe conspiracies they're just disorientated yeah like, mm. how many, you... like, normal they've made yeah. this normal to, <laughs> like... to, to, to quote noam chomsky it's the the bewildered herd yeah and if, and if you are the, yeah. the shepherd of the bewildered herd then you can get them yeah. to go whatever way you want them to go yeah. But if you wait back 10 years, I mean, I remember, you know, under Thatcher, I remember, you know, ministers, I mean, back then, even under a Thatcher government, you know, Cecil Parkinson, Bonk, Sarah Keys resigned, you know, um, Hesseltine resigned over Westland, you know, how, re re you know, re resigned over over the, I can't remember it was a budget or something, but it was they all the, resigned. Uh, EQ, wasn't it? That's Hard it. EQ. Yeah. yeah. So they all resigned over one tiny thing. You know, you go back to the 50s and 60s, Perfumo slept with a cool girl that was sleeping with a Russian guy. Government was brought down. But now, you know, they can fuck a helicopter now. And, and we're just like, oh, well, they fucked a helicopter. <laughs> Fine. We're not even bothered. Hey, we, 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 we've all been there. It, it we, we, we really are going down. <laughs> but we don't, do they? They don't nothing. We've had yeah. two scandals in a week. This should have brought, 10 years ago, this should have brought a government. We've, 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 we've got a third, by the way. We've got a third Tory scandal that only, only came out today. That's going to be my story. So go on. Carry on. Sorry. Well, do you want to no, do that? Uh, do you want to do that story? Sorry, is that about the Tory donor or is this another one? Uh, it's about it's about Liz Truss um, misappropriating a quote, and it turns yes. out to be quite anti-Semitic. Oh, go on. Um, so I'm just I'm just double checking it because I only heard it when I was walking I was walking to a, a job today, and um, basically she's misappropriated a, a quote. She's attached it to, and it's like one of these conspiracy theories. Um, uh, so basically, it's a quote from. She attributes it to uh, Mayor Amshul Rothschild, suggesting that he wanted to control a nation's money. But that okay. quote, you know, a Jewish man wanting to control people's money, and she's put that in her book, and the um, deputies of the, of the British Jews have written to her and said, you need to take that out because that's massively anti-Semitic. Yeah. And she's like, going, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh God, she's and, so it's stupid. Conspiracy of wealth. I mean, what, what, what? How, yeah. how can you see is that? But that... what they've what they've done is to sort of try and tamper the flames. They've said, right, um, it's that that particular quote's not going to appear in any of the e editions of the book or any future print editions. But the ones that are out of there, that's eh, fine. You're not going to recall them or anything like that. Just chuck it out of there. And I just think it's it's unbelievable that that she can get away with saying like just brush it off like that a very anti-semitic comment yeah. um 
trying to make a point, and she just goes, "That's all right. Um, yeah, didn't get that." So if if it was like a Corbyn book, they yeah. would be like, "You need to donate all of your advance money and royalties to an anti-Semitism charity." Like yep. it would be hellfire, wouldn't it? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I, I just think it's, it, and this is another one that's going to fly under the radar. Yeah. Because like, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Quickly move on. Someone, someone go and do something to an animal. Well, we've also got the um, the story about the Tory donor who has had fourteen million pounds worth of his assets frozen, and this is the guy who gives uh, Rishi Sunak lifts in his private jet everywhere. And on top of that, as if the scandals, you know, the that's four scandals so far, fifth scandal. Uh, Boris Johnson breached rules by being evasive Ooh. over his links yes. to a hedge fund, which paid for his trip to Venezuela to go and meet up with. Maduro. Euro for some reason that no one really understood. What? Venezuela, that's not very, not a very Tory country, is it? No, bloody socialists. Bloody socialists. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he went over there, and it was a hedge fund. Maybe they're hedging their bets on on the economy of Venezuela Double. failing when they mm. invade their neighbour Guyana. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, big shout out to Josh who's joined us. Hey, Josh, how you doing? What's up, Josh. If if it wasn't for nice. Josh, if it wasn't for Josh, I wouldn't be here today uh, because he's my father. But apart from that, uh, he also <laughs> allows me to use his his, his Zoom account because otherwise these uh, these episodes of uh, Labour Social would only last for forty minutes. <laughs> so thanks very much, Josh. How you doing, mate? Actually, in action. Yes, thank you. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on right at the last minute as well. How is everyone? That's all right. We're, we're good. Oh, we're just right. we're just doing our roundup of our like favorite stories of the week, or least favorite, or just stories we want to talk about. Um, but yeah, I, I was going to mention Liz Truss, but Wayne beat me to it because I just wanted to say that that bit of her holding her book upside down and and, and <laughs> like Trump with a Bible, long way round, <laughs> and then turning it and then getting it wrong again, and then turning it for the third time and finally getting it right is. Want to show us all sides? Absolutely priceless. Just- yeah. It's not do John's to come across as all bumbling and thick. Yeah, but um, but but Hey, uh, we're uh, talking about it. Yeah. But I mean Liz Truss well, I, I was gonna say Boris Johnson, I hate him, but some people think he's got a bit of charm about him. Liz Truss is the opposite of charm. She's just <laughs> she's like the most unlikable <laughs> person in the world. She she's a she's a Tory parody. She's yeah. like, if, if you were to yeah. write a, a comedy character, that's a Tory, it would be her. Yeah. Like Harry Enfield's Tory boy, and her. <laughs> Date Keeper Keymaster. Yeah, yeah. Her yeah. so, book's already uh, 50% off on Amazon, isn't it? Uh, she's going to do oh like a, uh, what's it, yeah. an partridge and go and watch it be pulped soon. Yeah. Was, that, was that a joke that Starmer made, that he had a rare unsigned copy of her book? Yeah. <laughs> he said that PMQs, yeah, a rare unsigned copy. Aid, can I ask you what your story is? Because you're probably going to bugger off at 10 o'clock on the knocker, aren't you? I am, yeah, about five minutes. Um, my favourite story this week was, I, I think this report is still unconfirmed at this stage, but... Oh, God, uh, don't get us sued. Week. <laughs> yeah, uh, allegedly, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, it's, it's nothing, like, strangely for this show, it's not anything defamation-y, so we're, hey! we're okay. <laughs> Hooray! Uh, how about right. that? Did you, um, not, did, did you not get a brief? <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, it's the story earlier in the week that uh, as the Rwanda policy uh, continues to suffer pushback by the Lords, it's not going to get through in the capacity that they were looking for. Um, the civil servants and uh, Tory aides have been asked to find alternative countries. And I thought oh. this is funny because it kind of speaks to this idea of like, They've come up with this policy. Everyone's told them it's unworkable. It's economically unviable. It's not going to be a deterrent. It's not going to achieve anything that you're setting out to. Um, But instead of listening to all of that, instead of actually taking a holistic view and going like, okay, maybe we should rethink this. Instead, what they're doing is they're like, oh, there's a problem with Rwanda. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just find some other countries then instead. (laughs) <laughs> it's like mm. they've just got out. They found Sierra Leone. Oh, they and then found, not like Madagascar, like the old Madagascar plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, th- they're thinking outside the box, basically, guys. And I was like, like, the box. this I is know. never going to happen. Like, I can guarantee now that all the civil servants who were supposed to be tasked with doing this, they, they are going to be looking at their watches and their calendars and they're going to be like, 
you guys are going to be out of power mm. in a matter of weeks, <laughs> maximum months. Have, have so we why are we up, busting yeah. our asses trying to get this over the line? It's easy. It's... We've struck up a trade deal with Australia. Let's send them all there. Let's see how that goes. Oh, there. beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. There you go. That's what they keep saying. Look how I, that turned out. I've got to oh, say, yeah. I've got to say, I, I think that there is some mileage in this because. We had these problematic people called Puritans who basically wanted to whitewash all our churches and shut down all the theatres and all the brothels and stop everyone from drinking. And they weren't much fun. So we put them on boats and we sent them over to uh, uh, sent them to America, uh, where they I don't know what they did. Um, probably in power now. It never work out. Yeah, it never work out. And then we had a problem in in the eighteen hundreds because we had cities for the first time and there was a lot of crime in these cities. So we got all the criminals together, the ones we caught, and, and and we sent them over to Australia. So I think we kind of need to do the same thing for Tories now. We need to find yeah. somewhere on the planet that is in desperate need of cheap labour. I don't know, and and we should send them send send them some Tories, lots of Tories, thousands, millions of Tories. Just get them out of the country, what about and we will replace one them of those uh... with people from the Commonwealth. Right. One, one of those work. floating crypto utopias. Send them out to one of those, you know, libertarian dream. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they can live their libertarian dream. I've been the podcast. We've been the Okay, no. Wayne. <laughs> I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. <laughs> I've got to run. Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Guys. guys. No worries, mate. Okay. Take, bye bye. Take, take it easy. Have a good weekend, mate. Ta la. Bye, mate. Sorry, that. that... That was my daughter. She only rings me when she wants the code to download something on her phone. Just like, just like when Graham messages right, me. Got a fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the only time. It, it's the only time that Josh ever hears from me. Is like, can you send me the code? It's when the two, it's when, have the code, please. It's, it's when I've been screwed over by everything. the, the fucking two-factor authentication. Like, that's not the reason to call Josh daddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's what he says. He won't give me the code until I call him daddy. We've, we've, we've no, gone full circle. You've got to pay the piper. <laughs> um, I've, got a, I've got a super chat here, which I'll have to read out. Uh, thank you very much to Damien uh, for the super chat. Studies show people with lower IQ vote conservative. Well, there you go. I won't, I won't disagree. But, um, lefties have better sex and more sex, apparently. That That's makes true. I've heard that. I love the way it. it's silent. Everyone should fucking suck. Just, yeah. I've, well, I've forced uh, myself into being a lefty. Some good news. <laughs> some good news this week. I'm not sure what... forcing yourself is the right terminology <laughs> there, Wayne. Yeah. All left have become the best. I'm going to get used to it. There's, there's <laughs> a. No from Essex, but come on. <laughs> there's a show. There's a show called The Rest Is Entertainment, uh, which is hosted by Matt Osman. Not Matt Osman. He's in Swade. His brother, what's his name? Richard, Richard Osman, and um, oh, yeah. and uh, Marina Hyde, and uh, it's very good. And then they did a thing this week about the political opinions of people who watch certain TV shows. And the TV show that skewed the most towards Labour in its viewership was Taskmaster. And the show, one of the shows that skewed the most towards the Tories, well, used to be Strictly Come Dancing, which skewed twenty percent of its audience towards the Tories. However, in the last year, when they've redone this study, it's shown that there's now like a, a six to eight um, percent uh, advantage to uh, Labour. So it's the same people watching these shows. It's not like a load of Labour voters have come over and started watching these shows. It's just that when asked, these people are now saying I'm going to vote Labour. So that's given me a bit of hope. So Strictly is now a Labour show. Yeah, but it's, it's just that, how do you quantify that though? Well, you got. Oh, yeah. You ask them. You say, "Do you watch Strictly Come Dancing?" They say, "Yeah." And then you say, are you a Tory? And they go, no. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it, just, it, just, it just seems it's just like... Surveys. <laughs> Maybe they'll ask if they're thick. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's the like, second like, question. Like are you, you see, thick? It's like when you see on like Pantene adverts, 97% of women um, agreed, and it says like only 200 people were <laughs> asked. 97 women were asked, yeah. Sorry, it's, my phone's going mental. Well, um, should we go on to the next um, person to ask about the uh, the story of the week? Can we go to Rachel next? Rachel, was your hmm? what was your story? Ooh, this um, week? Well, like, <laughs> I mean, I loved all the Liz Trust. I mean, I'm not going to do Liz Trust, but I loved all the Liz, Liz Trust. The Joy Politics did a montage of all her God. interviews, which is really, really good and really quite funny. And it's just mad. She wants to ban everything, but she's like, so that was kind of crazy. There was also the story about Mary and Kate's being at the Nazi conference saying 
was she there was she not jerry politics said she was but nobody knew and then she wrote she then tweeted here's my speech for the nazi conference on twitter today so it's like yeah i think she was there but so that was quite funny but the thing the ring that wasn't a funny story but it was in the u.s about banning in three red states they banned um protest and it's this boil frog boiling water that people don't know that it's happening mm. but it's happened wow. and it's due to a case um so if the person organizes a a, a a protest they've made them liable in the in i think it's in their appeals in their in their local state court they're liable for anything that anybody does so somebody throws a rock at a policeman or something they're liable for that but not, not only that if the, but, so if you are doing a black rights matter and the kkk turn up and they behave badly you're liable for them as well so this wow. was then appealed to the Supreme Court because it's a stupid law. You don't make people yeah. liable for everybody. And the Supreme Court have said, we're not going to hear it. Shocker. Um, mm. So three states now effectively have banned protest. And but that's, 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 that's America's get out of jail free clause, isn't it? Because they just kick it back to the states. The federal federal government just go, nothing to do with us, Gov. Yeah, and as soon as you kick it back to the states, it's like yeah. it's a free for all. It's it's like the whole um, abortion ban. It's like yeah. oh, we we'll just leave it up to the states. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to get our hands involved in that one. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that and that's a sort of little tactic. I think is we're seeing a bit of project creep over here with that as well. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They want to ban protests. I think they might talk to each other. These hard rights. I think they might use phones and stuff. I think they might be speaking to each other. Yeah, but the thing is, it, it's going to stop anyone on the right protesting as well because Antifa will just turn up and smash stuff up, and they'll the, the, the people on the right will have to take the uh, the fall for it. And they never think that far ahead. Mm. It's like the Tories have given themselves sweeping powers in government, but that this government is more powerful than any government since the war in terms of like mm. what it what it can get yep. away with. And now they're going to hand over all that power to. They're rivals. They're going to hand it over to the Labour Party, who can do with it yeah. what they will. Oh, yeah, but they've also the Labour Party have also said they're not going to repeal anything that um, has been put in, like the, the protest laws and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, they don't have to um, repeal them. They just have to uh, basically amend them, and they can neutralise yeah. them by amending them. But I think that's yeah. more to do with the amount of time they're going to have and the amount of shit they're going to have to do, it, the, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the next yeah. five yeah. years but to just try and work. write the ship. I really, I, I really don't help. But I really hope they don't do the the classic Tory thing of every time it comes to PMQs, they say, "Well, this is a mess that we inherited." And it's like, "Yeah, mate, it's been fifteen fucking years." <laughs> yeah, worry right. yourself. It's yeah, but I mean, in the first couple of terms, they're going to be wading yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, and no one's going to argue oh. with that. By the way, breaking news while we've been on 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 um on online um. The, uh, the the Tories have said no to this uh, EU proposal for young people to be able to travel and work through the EU um, more conveniently. For This was for 18 to 30-year-olds proposal. I think Labour are going to probably pick this up once they're in, in power, but I don't think they're going to talk about it before the election because, you know, Brexit, the the hate that they're not speak its name. Um, it, yeah. it, 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 they are, I honestly, they are we... terrified of even mentioning it. And I understand. I want to see that. The person that advises Sunak right now, we really need to take them out, <laughs> you want, Sam? <laughs> take them out for a drink and thank them after all this. You know, everything, every, you know, every, it's a bit like Tom Baker in that Blackadder sketch. All the other captains say you do and I say you don't. It's whatever it is that you would normally do. Sunak always, let's get GPs not to write sick notes. Let's, uh, you know, go net zero. Let's cancel HS2. Let's. And whoever is advising him, honestly, we need to buy them a drink because it's just the lunatic stuff that Sunak, wherever he goes, you think, I'm like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Liz Truss, um, I yeah. found out today that he's like even lower in popularity. I mean, we already knew he was, but yeah. he's got even lower. Like he's so desperately unlikable um, because people just see for him as a posh twat. Yeah. He, have any idea i mean the guy passively makes what is it like 20 million a year yeah. just passively doing fuck all yeah um and also made his fortune from mm. um you know the, the banker crash yeah. it's just you know which we were forced to pay back yeah it's mm. just almost like being pm to side hustle yeah. 
talking about do I, do I Sorry, talking of fossils, uh, questionable lab sanity. Thank you very much for the super chat. There is an island off the coast of Donegal called Tory Island. We could pay <laughs> Ireland for moving the Bibby Stockholm there, and they could have facilities on board or live on the island. It's full of Tory galleons, just, pirate galleons. Just to, to your point about um, being a PM is a is a side hustle. I can imagine like going clicking on a YouTube video and there's Rishi coming up saying, "Would you like to earn some extra money?" For doing nothing. <laughs> for doing fuck all. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm Nigel Farage. Born if rich. you've seen Nigel Farage's YouTube adverts, you know he is selling like all sorts of wealth management stuff. Oh, he's getting all sorts of shit out, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, he's been yeah. doing that for years. Anyway, John, yeah. have you got have you got a story that you picked up this week? Oh, I've just muted myself by mistake. <laughs> <there we go. laughs> um, too excited. How many years have we been on so Zoom? <laughs> you are. Like, what's this technology thing? <laughs> What's been going on? Um, I, I was going to mention the, uh, the 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 website that uh, Josh and and our friends have been working on, but as he's turned up, I'm not going to. Well, well I was going to I was going to leave that um, to Josh when I get to him. I'm leaving it to him as well. Uh, so so what I will talk about actually is the polls this week because there's been two polls in particular that I've been I found really interesting. First of all, the JL partners have have uh, come to the conclusion, and they're quite good. JL, I've always always they've always been pretty good um that it's only in the only over 70s where the tories come first in who who the the general who they're going to vote for everyone under under 70 has basically in this polling has come out to say that the Tories the, then just not going to vote not going to go near tory and it's it's not even close either apparently it's, it was something like 30 oh goodness me it's something like 20 six percent or 29 points difference of wow. everyone under 70 wow. which i think is absolutely astounding um it just goes to show that the next a... generation of conservatives just are not there then yeah. they're not coming it's in, through. in such a short space it. of There's time so as well. many this has only been yeah, like yeah. a few years hasn't it i mean yeah but, uh, the tories uh, thought in 2016 when they won in december 2016 they thought they were going to be in for 10 years oh you know? yeah but but yeah, and also you've got the Ipsos uh, poll as well, where they've dipped oh, yes. to nine. And Ipsos are quite credible, aren't they? And, and yeah, they've yeah. dipped to nineteen percent. They've hit. They've gone below twenty. That's astonishing. And, and Rishi Sunak yeah. is the most unpopular prime minister that we have on records because polling on that kind of thing only really began in like the nineteen thirties. Exactly. <laughs> and we live in a world with Liz Truss and Boris Johnson. So you've just got to, you, work that one out. But you've got to be concerned about the, the vacuum that, that then leaves. Who's gonna then fill that? Is it gonna be these reform twats and people of their ilk? Do you know what I mean? Because if 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 the Tories become that toxic that people don't want to be associated with them, but then you get this kind of right sort of swell coming up yeah. in sort of like because the the overton window is shifting slightly left on a bit like like an iceberg but it's shifting slightly left which means that the center is going to look more like the center and the right is going to look even more right but the problem mm. is if the people in the center are being like reasonable and if you've got slightly right leaning views the only people that are really going to speak to you are the people all the way over there and that's well, that's, that's a, a good point that's a good point. It's a good point, but also, I mean, the, the I'm I'm hoping that the Tories get absolutely smashed, and the Lib mm. Dems are like the only sensible thing on offer for people yeah. who are a bit centre right, yeah. and they'll be like, okay, and that will help bring the Overton window. But I I, I totally get what you're saying there, mate. With yeah. the whole like, what if the only person who's talking about the right wing things are the absolute mm. nutters? Uh, I, mm. I just hope we can keep them on the periphery as much as possible. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a super chat to say. And also, Puninator, apparently I said 2016 before I meant 2019. When I was talking about December 2019. Um, Alexander Campbell, thank you very much. Uh, Alexander's story of the week, <laughs> which which Alexander gets to say because he's, he's dropped a super chat in. Um, uh, DeSantis... Is it the Alex Campbell? Alistair. Yes, yeah. No, no, well, Alex Alexander Campbell. Alexander, 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 not Alistair, not Alistair. Oh. Alexander. Oh, um, DeSantis's oh. law on book banning has backfired as an activist has applied to ban the Bible. Bible, yes. All the sex I heard and that. violence in the Bible, which uh, I completely please. understand because the Bible is quite yeah. incredibly gory. There's yeah. incest, there's rape, there's yeah. murders. There's a bit where two girls the about... get their dad drunk and have sex with him so they can have his babies. That literally happens. This is the point about um, the right wing 
policy though really generally like across the boards not just for this particularly yeah. but like there is no consistency and no. loads of hypocrisy right yeah. um it's just like cherry picking things that they want and not really thinking about you know how that really applies in the real world yeah, yeah. it's yeah. all just about storytelling yeah absolutely. yeah it's like the old um i don't mean you when it comes to someone being a bit racist yeah yeah, yeah. you're all right <laughs> yeah no you're all right mate you're all right. we'll keep the bible we'll see other stuff all that other muck so what I post on LinkedIn all the time, I would say people are going back book banging. I say people who ban books always end up in bunkers blowing their brains out. It's never a good move and it really annoys them. Yeah. But, yeah. I um, love you, Rachel. <laughs> uh, There's time. also a lot of projection involved in this stuff as well, right? They ban stuff yeah. that actually they feel guilty about liking often as well. well yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, but it, it backfires it's, it's all like the, the time because they don't think it through. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like them, for... um, conversion therapy doctors. Yeah. All, all turn out to be a little bit, hmm. Yeah. Oh, I like a little winkle. <laughs> these, these, these are the people. I mean, this is the problem. Like, they blame, like, gay people and trans people for all these crimes. Yeah. The biggest sex offenders are politicians and church leaders and scout leaders and, yeah. like, yep. standing members of society yeah. who hide in plain sight. Yeah. It's bullshit. I saw a really great... Well, Benedictian monks. Yeah, I, I saw I saw a, a an absolutely horrific story this week, and, and trigger warning again, I guess. And, and this was about a woman whose husband was a convicted paedophile, and she wanted to obviously keep him away from her children, but the law court. was yeah, the law was that he ha was allowed access. Not only that, yes. was she, she couldn't take the kids on holiday out the country without his say-so while he was in jail. And she had to spend nearly £30,000 getting into a situation in which she didn't have to ask a convicted paedophile if it was okay for her to take her kids on holiday so they could uh, actually break look, off any contact with him. And that law is, needs to change. Well, yeah. I mean, Dr. Proudman, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's awesome. Um, she's uh, the lawyer that's been standing up against the Garrett Club. She's the one that was like horrifically um, kind of harassed uh, for speaking out about sexism in, in her profession. She's a barrister. Uh, she's talked a lot about this subject and it is shocking, some of the stuff. I mean, it's basically a way for women that and, and people broadly who are in abusive kind of family situations to continue to be it's almost like the courts facilitate their abusers continuing to control them yeah. and uh, people that have been convicted of as you say things like that have un still have like the right to have access to to kids their kids and it's like what the fuck how is this even you know allowed um we've got so many Problem. So I think we should just burn everything down and just start again, really. Uh, it's sounding a bit like Liz Trust there, Super. Yeah, Tan. You know, it's like, you know, burn it all down. <laughs> super Tan. Super. <laughs> Hello, Super. Super, 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 super. twist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, no, it's uh, not like, you, you're telling me I sound like Liz Trust. Okay, I take that. Burn down the deep state. Bring it all down. Get rid of the Supreme Court. Get rid of the Bank of England. Bring it, it sounded a bit. It's bring like it down. Burn, 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 you know, eat the rich style, you know. Yeah, like, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that way, you know, the bad ones. Yeah, yeah, know. that's all good. That's what we say are bad. <laughs> Tan, have I, have I already asked you what you thought your oh, week was? I'm, I'm sorry, kind I don't of... know where to begin. Um, I, 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 like, I you've, you've covered basically everything. Obviously, Menzies was mental. Um, the Nazi conference getting shut down. Oh, yeah, um, by, you that? Uh, we haven't mentioned that. But that was illegal. Uh, they weren't meant to shut it down, but I don't care. I'm just glad that it well, made... Actually, uh, Farris was like a dickhead. But didn't didn't that other the the left wing conference get shut down? The one that Yanis Varoufakis was at, and they they were they was fine with that. But the that C one, yeah, that's 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 disgusting. This freedom of speech is you. But the other one, um, I think it was in Germany, wasn't it? Different countries, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Um, but I I didn't know about the other one. But I just I just knew about the. The national conservatism mm. yeah well that's what i'm saying like they, they didn't say anything about the the other one being shut down because they're like oh, they're fine with that that's all what left is talking about you know policies oh, right. that will fit. Yeah, but yeah. the net c one is a freedom of speech issue it was it fuck <laughs> i mean because hate speech i mean um i think john ashworth did an absolutely brilliant uh job of explaining um 
he he did a piece for GB News and he shut them the hell up because he started mentioning all the shocking things that that the people he did a very quick Google on camera and totally showed up. I think it was Harwood and someone else. Uh, I don't think it was this week, but there is one thing that really, really made me laugh and it probably shouldn't have. But, you know, it's reform. Um, was I think, this happened, I think this happened longer than a week ago slightly but I wasn't here last week I was in Brighton um but I wasn't having as mental a time as Josh after I left you you ended up going to some kind of like mad party with Tom but um reform apologized <laughs> had to apologize for sacking an inactive candidate who turned out to be dead and <laughs> something and the and the, the the picture they used was like it was like Tice gesturing to the to, to no one like a ghost. And <laughs> they decided to use the term mortified. Um, but the reason, like they were like, oh, um, this election candidate, he's been a bit inactive. We'd better sack him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, elective but effective. Elective went, to, but went to his grave with his pay forty five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, They've not realised that Enoch Powell's been dead since uh, God knows nineteen ninety odd, hasn't he? So this yeah. is this is the thing. Mm. I mean, it, it was literally their only candidate that they had that wouldn't give a racism. <laughs> they were missing out on. You know, they should have like they should have like weekend at Bernie's him as their star candidate. Yeah. Like, There's some, the some pulleys and all that. Yeah, stuck him on the top of the box. <laughs> There's a whole thing about that them... on the on the on the election <laughs> on the ballot paper. <laughs> just, have, just have him smiling and put like a little voice, a little speaker in his mouth like that. Yeah. Ah. 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 Just laughing at this. Oh I'm just... the, only, the only old strings in the back. <laughs> I'm just imagining the, the, the ballot the paper. I'm just imagining the ballot paper with uh, Bernie's comma weekend at. <laughs> just like dick. <laughs> Um, when they put that kind of memo out, though, you know, about, uh, you know, we, we kind of the, the story was covered about, you know, oh, they're, they're telling, you know, they're racist um, well, they're, they're candidates not to be racist. Sorry. Right. But yeah. actually, the, the memo was actually more about, like, don't go on the Internet when you're drunk. And you're that was kind of, the yeah. So like, yeah. yeah, it's like, look, the racism's fine. OK, uh, just like, you know, hold back on the Internet a little bit. Like, just don't say it out loud public. too much. Yeah. The spokesperson, though, the spokesperson said the simple fact is we've had to remove up 50 candidates for complete inactivity. I know those who have been removed for disciplinary measures. Mr. Cork was clearly not one of them. <laughs> oh my god it tickles me still oh, no. but there's also that stat about uh brexit voters you know reducing in numbers purely because they're older and you know and are yeah. dying i mean this probably aligns quite nicely with that statistic right yeah. so, oh, voters, brilliant. basically killing off all their oldies because they don't yeah. want to pay for social care yeah. it's like oh, covid they're doing the thing again oh that's another one the tories are uh, once again failing to test patients being put back into care homes um, which killed, what was it, 20, 30,000 people um, in care homes mm -hmm. between three yeah. months, in three months at the beginning of the pandemic. And um, they're, they're killing their to... own. <laughs> yeah, I know, this is the maddest thing. And they don't even need proper ID. They just need a sketch of themselves at the polling booths <laughs> <laughs> done by like a, a local artist, you know. Speaking, like, speaking of which, John, look what, came, look what came in the post. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, my other son got one as well. We've got two in our house now. Voting certificate. Um, yeah. Oh, go yeah. on. Give, give uh, viewers a quick big up about how you get that. Get yeah, yourself uh, one, right. everyone. Without, without doxing one. anyone. I'm not doxing that because my, <laughs> my, my address is on the back side of it. So I just showed you this bit and I made sure it's all blurry. So I'm going nice to screen grab it. To get Be your good. authority certificate. Yes. Yeah, so basically you go onto your local authority's website um, and it should be there in the top bar, um, get um, voter authority certificate. You just fill in your details, upload a mugshot, and they just post it through you. And it's just literally a sheet of A4 paper with um, some watermarks in it. Um, and, yeah, it comes through in a couple of days. I mean, I don't even need one. I just wanted to see what it was all about and how easy it was. And um, yeah, It's really easy to get. It's What's a that? barrier. We know that people don't really vote as as they should anyway. So what yeah. they're trying to do is put all these little things in the way, so people just go, "Oh, I can't be fucked with it. Can't be asked." Yeah, but because I mean, there might be a time when they go, 
oh no, you can't have a driving license or um, you need to have one of these particular things. They might stipulate you have to have one of these. And if you think, oh, I can't be asked to get that, and you turn up with your passport and driving license, uh, sorry, mate, that's no good. Or you turn up with your passport, well, that's not got your address on it. So off you go. I mean, obviously, driving license got your address on it, so that it's, should be all um... right. So why is it like a sharpie to the polling booth? You know? No, but they do yeah. they do accept your passport, even though it doesn't have your address on it, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. No, no, um, but what I'm saying is if they're putting these barriers in, yeah, they could yeah. then move the goalpost, so you oh, have absolutely. to have one of these. Absolutely. You know what? Also discretion, because a lot of people were turned away because you get, like, jobs worth wankers at the polling booths who mm. are, like, saying, oh, well, I, you know, power goes to their heads. And they go, mm. oh, even though they're volunteers, oh, I don't think that looks like you. And, mm. you know, there was a lot of that going on last time, even with valid ID, yeah. where people were like, oh, well, I don't think that's... Or, or, or one was like slightly out of date because they, they say you can mm. have an passport as long as it's kind of like a good likeness to you. So, um, yeah, and, and loads of people were turned away last time, weren't there they? Were, yeah. There were people being turned away before they even went in as well, which means that firstly... Uh, you know, they weren't being counted as being turned away because they uh, they didn't get into the polling you, booth. You, yeah, you can't count a negative, can you? Yeah, but also it is the people at the desk in the polling booth that should actually be the ones checking yeah. um, whether your idea is valid or not, not people outside. Yeah. Um, and then there's another stat of the people that were turned away, how many people came back? And of course, it's not very many, you know, because some people yeah. would have had the right idea, but didn't need, know they needed to bring it as well. So, you yeah. know, people just went, they came once, that was their opportunity to come and vote. Maybe they had to go back to work or, you know, or they'd traveled far or they didn't have enough money because no one's got any bloody money at the moment to get the yeah. bus mm -hmm. again. Right. Yeah. There's all sorts of reasons. And then someone else has done some research and I, I can't remember who it was, but um, to, sh to try and work out how many people might not have even tried. Yeah. Right? Or, and because they just kind of like, well, I don't know what, if I've got the right thing or not. So I just won't bother. And that was about 400,000 people last time. Oh, I'm, then... going, I'm going there fully tooled up, mate. I'm taking oh, passport, <laughs> driving license, utility no, bill, show <laughs> reel. I'm going to show him this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the right thing to do. Take take multiple things. Like, just take yeah. as I many things as you can. I you so tooled up. up. I'm going with my <laughs> I'm gonna fucking yeah. when I last, the, um, last turn me away, uh, motherfucker. Ten, in the last take local, with a baseball bat. volunteers in the locals last time, and I was doing number checking. I was like sitting like a little pathetic wanker. No, it wasn't the last locals. It was the locals before that. I was doing the number taking, and I had to sit next to a local Tory, oh, and she looked like Miriam Margulies, but she was like the anti Miriam Margulies. Like, <laughs> were, were you were you burnt there on one side? I my lip was sore from where I had to bite it because we were, all, we were all pretending to have this kind of like you know camaraderie. The local Lib Dems who are wankers, the local Tories who are even worse, and then like the local Labour lot who are sound. And um, I was having to sit there, and they like she started trying to tell me that homelessness was a choice, right? And I was sitting there, and I was like, Oh Jesus! In the end, in the end, I had to say, please stop talking to me and she was like it's that's very rude i was like it would be ruder if you don't stop talking to me <laughs> <laughs> it'd be rude if i choke slam you through this table well I... it will be yeah. and then she got up and she fucked off right and then the local lib dems were just sitting there just like on the fence obviously just saying nothing and um yeah i just i just she must have seen the fury in my eyes because I, I gave her a very solid but polite warning <laughs> um it was it was really grim yeah she was like the anti miriam it was so weird wow. it was uh, lovely warm miriam but in a kind of like tory version it was horrible um, yeah Ooh. um we got a super chat just come in from damien uh damien thank you very much damien there uh, for the super chat. Uh, for some reason, my live chat on my phone has disappeared, which isn't very helpful. Uh, so I have to oh, read this off my tiny yeah. screen to get my magnifying glass out. I'm getting old. Uh, the really oh, old, the really old people that fought in World War Two were mostly pro EU, like my granddad. Unfortunately, they mostly passed away before the referendum, which is true. I mean, they're, they're the generation who yeah. got us to join the EEC in the first place in 1973 and then voted to remain in the EEC in 1975 when we had the referendum. And it was almost it was almost two thirds majority of the country said, yeah, we, we want to be a part of this. Yeah. And it was made clear at the time that it wasn't just about trade. It was about future closer ties and integration politically and economically across our continent. But, uh, but, but they, how many how many how many of these boomers do you hear ring out radio and go? Oh, it was all about trade. It was all yeah, about it was all trade. About trade. I didn't it's all want about any trade. 
So what you're saying, Graham, is we had a vote. They should get over it, right? Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. They should have got (laughs) over it. But talking of voting and ID, Josh, tell us what's launching on Monday. (laughs) Well, look, I mean, we were just talking about those stats, right? So there's there's a couple of other interesting stats that have come out recently. First one is uh, that um, I think the Electoral Commission estimate that 8 million people might be missing from the electoral roll. Wow. So those are people that could be registered to vote um are eligible to vote but aren't registered um so there's an argument and a case for automatic voter registration at every opportunity right universities to do it do it when you get your driver's license it's all the same information all that stuff right um the other stat is that there could be up to five million people um who don't have voter id who are going to need it as well right so and there's another percentage of that that have no clue that this is even a thing that they're going to need so there's going to be clearly a huge issue now I i think you know, there's, there's in some ways this uh, the the fact that they've introduced voter ID so early before the general election might backfire that it's going to become a big story, but it didn't become as big a story as it should have done last year. Um, so I think if a lot more people are, sh- are turned away this time, uh, it really should be a huge story because if that's five million people that might not even bother voting, that's a big big huge issue, right? Um, but an exciting big number. <laughs> is that there was also some polling or like or surveying done in the last couple of weeks to ask how many people would lend their vote to another party uh, other than their preferred party to get their Tories out. 13 million people, <laughs> All right? So that's such a huge number of people that are kind of switched onto this idea that actually, look, I'm just gonna show up to get the Tories out um, and I get it, I, you know, I, I need to vote for the best candidate to do that. You know, um, so that's that's hugely exciting. But of course, the point is that if a lot of them are being disenfranchised, huge challenges ahead. And what you're seeing there really is like this voting intent against the conservatives um, being attacked. Right. And, you know, the the result, the the, end, the outcome of the election will not be representative of the intention of, that people have against uh, against the conservatives. So it's yeah, massively worrying, of course. But I think that, like all of this needs to be made a huge story but the main mm. thing about the number of people that are willing to vote tactically you know not everyone will have to do that of course some people are in a seat where they're happy uh, to vote for the candidate but their intention is is an interesting one to note but it also needs to be recognized how many people actually end up doing that after the election because those yeah. people deserve their vote to really count they should be able to vote for things right yeah. Um, and that, I think, hopefully, is the story of after the after the election of like how many people showed up against something, and how pretty much that's been the case at every general election we've had for the last hundred years. That a lot of people have to do that, and they shouldn't have to do it. Well, yeah, um, I've said this before, and I'll, I'll say it again: it's this this whole voter ID thing is just it's a copy and paste from the Republican thing in America. We've got that. It's like yeah. how can we disenfranchise people that are not that are not going to vote for us? Yeah. We'll just make it a little bit harder. So it's like, oh, do you know what? I can't be bothered. Well, yeah. um, it's just an egg. G- GHK, thank you very much for the super chat, GHK. Um, saying, Papier, bitter. Enough sad papers, please, in German. Um, yes, indeed. But Josh, so I, t- tell us about the website. Tell us about yeah. what's launching on Monday. Quick, because we, we've got to... Yeah, and I messaged earlier to say, hey, oh, get oh, daggers oh, off my okay beautiful I girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so last year we ran Stop the Tories. Vote um, for the first ever time for a local election. A tactical voting website existed that's never been done before, um, and uh, we gave advice um, uh, that helped people vote their Tory councillors out. We had half a million people, just shy of half a million people, use it over a period of about six days, which is just an incredible appetite to you know to show up. And I feel like a lot of people who um, you know wouldn't have necessarily shown up having realized their vote could actually mean something and it was useful, you know, did. The Conservatives last year um, kind of tried to scare their base voters uh, by saying, oh, we could lose a thousand Conservative councillors, you know, please show up, right, in small print. Um, and they lost a thousand and sixty-three, right? So we kind yeah, of took that as a goal. amazing. I know, watching that graph and they had, someone said they had to extend the graph on the BBC website. It was amazing, <laughs> right? Because they um, lost so many. Because they'd lost so many and their graphic designer hadn't thought that would be possible. But, you know, this is what happens when people show up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we kind of announced ourselves last year, but we're going to go even bigger this time. Um, We're we're aiming to do two and a half million people this time, five times, right? Let's do it. 
yeah, we had only yeah. six days last time. We've got more time this 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 year. Um, you know, there aren't a thousand count Tory councillors up for election. Unfortunately, there's about nine hundred and sixty something. Um, yeah, you know, so that might be smaller. Every single one of them. So this is this is stop the yeah. Tories dot vote, and John has just put that up on the screen. Good yeah. lads. Um, and yeah, so it's launching over the next few days. We've been working very hard, um, and. The, we're going to be offering advice in um, as a percentage in more places than we did last time, even though there are actually fewer fewer elections. Um, so more people will have the advice they need. The yeah, there are obviously quite a few places where you don't need to um, vote a Tory out, and you'll be able to vote however you like. And we'll we'll hopefully reassure you that that's the case, and still you know still show up and do it. Yeah. Um, no. We're also this time for the first time. There's going to be uh, this is an exclusive, Graham. Um, <laughs> uh, Tactical voting for mayoral elections as well. Um, yep. And London Assembly as well. Yes, Queen. So we're going Fantastic. bigger. The, the data's out there. Stop Why not the go Tories for it, right? dot vote. So have a look at that mm -hmm. and, and tell 10 people you know about it. Everyone watching this, tell 10 people that you know. So listen, we're going to have to, gonna have to wrap it up in a minute. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Alec. Uh, Burrett, uh, for the two pound super chat. Tactical voting was a massive thing back in 1906 when wow. the I think the Tories got decimated in that in that election, didn't they? Uh, yeah, it was a good it, it was the Liberals, Liberals absolutely smashed them, yeah. yeah. And um, let's burn them to the ground before we burn everything else to the ground, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's, there's been a time for the match you stay on. <laughs> there's been a few stories that we, ha we just haven't had time for, we haven't even talked about Trump. Uh, and his, his criminal trial this week. There was uh, Paul Murrell, the... Uh, sorry, not Paul, Peter. Peter Murrell, who's the husband of um, of, of um, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, has been actually charged with embezzlement. He, he was arrested mm -hmm. last year or the year before, and now he's actually been charged with it, which is a huge no new story. Um, so there's mm -hmm. lots of things to talk about, but we're going to have to call it a night, I'm afraid, because I've, I've got to... I've got stuff to do. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, do you want to stay here and talk amongst yourselves? Put some sexual healing on the uh, on the uh, the the uh, what's it? The speaker, the Bluetooth, Alexa. <laughs> Play <laughs> sexual music. <laughs> I'm charm my lady this evening. Yeah, yeah. Elevator music. She's, she's, she, she, I told her we were going to finish at, tw uh, at ten o'clock. You see, and um, it's now it's now thirty four minutes past ten. <laughs> so. I thank might literally be sleeping in a doghouse tonight. Uh, but thank what? you very much uh, for everyone coming on the show. Oh, Thanks. Jesus. Thanks, Is that Rachel, code? And John and Tan and Wayne and Josh. Thank you so much. And also thanks to Aid who who pissed off earlier, as he always does. Uh, but, and also thank you to you for watching. Thanks for all the chat. Uh, th thanks for all the super chats as well. And until next time, I'll say hello, good evening, welcome, and goodbye.